a warm welcome to all of you in this lecture on thermoplastics and thermosets. As we have been discussing in our series of lectures in the course processing of non-metals, we have been discussing the processing of various types of non-metals. So, polymers or plastics also represent one category which have properties which are far similar to the non-metallic properties. So, in this particular module that we are going to cover now that is processing of plastics or polymers, we would be having a series of seven lectures. Just to give you an overview that in our course on processing of non-metals, we have seven different modules out of which this is module number four. We have already seen in module number one that what are the various types of engineering materials, what are the various types of manufacturing processes which are used to process these materials. And we have seen that what is the basic differentiation between a metal and a non-metal in lecture number 2 in module 1. Then we shifted our attention to the different classes of materials in module 2. We have covered glasses. We have seen that what are the various processing techniques for glasses. We have seen the melting of the glass, what are the types of furnaces which are used. We have seen that how the shape is given to the glass when it is in the molten form. Different techniques with the help of the diagrams we have tried to understand. Then in module 3 we have discussed the ceramics. And in module 4 now, we are going to discuss the polymers or the plastics. Now, today's lecture is dedicated towards the basic understanding about the polymers with differentiation between the thermoplastics and the thermosets. Why? Because the processing would depend upon the properties of the type of polymer that we are going to process. Now, if we are processing thermoplastic, the properties the processing would be dependent on the properties of thermoplastics. If we are processing the thermosets, the processing techniques or the methodologies would be dependent upon the properties of the thermosets. So, basically we need to understand that what are thermoplastics, what are thermosets and how they are, what are the various advantages of each one of them or what are the advantageous properties of these materials which we can take advantage of when we want to convert them into any tangible product. So, there will be different types of products which can be made by thermoplastics and thermosets which we will be covering in today's lecture that what are the various applications of the thermoplastics and the thermosets. In this particular module, we would be concentrating two lectures on the basic properties, the mechanical properties, the applications of the various types of polymers and the classification of various types of polymers. Today is lecture number 1 in module 4 which is dedicated towards this particular discussion on the properties of the polymers and in lecture number 2 also we would be covering the same thing. Then the subsequent 5 lectures would be dictated or would be dedicated towards the processing of the polymers in which we would be covering different types of processing processing techniques such as compression molding, extrusion, injection molding and some other processes which are used for processing of plastics or processing of polymers. So, with this introduction to this particular module of processing of plastics, now we will start our basic definition of the plastics or the polymers. Now, what is a plastic? The word plastic comes from the Greek word plastikos meaning able to be shaped and molded. So, basically what is the basic criteria here that this particular material which we are calling as a plastic has the ability to be shaped and molded, which means that we can give shape to a plastic material depending upon the requirement. Now, suppose I want to make a mouse that I am using with the laptop. So, this particular mouse has been molded into the desired shape. The pen, the cap of the plastic pen, the cap is made up of a plastic material. What does that signify? That any plastic which was in the raw form has been converted into the cap of the pen, which means it has been molded or shaped into the desired forms. So, we will see that there would be a large number of applications of thermosets and thermoplastics that would be covered in today's lecture. But basically, we should understand that what is a plastic? Plastic derives its name from the Greek word 
plasticose which means that it has the property to be shaped and molded into the desired forms. Now you can see on your screen that the plastics or the polymers can broadly be categorized into two categories that is thermoplastics and thermoset. So, this is the topic of our lecture today to differentiate between thermoplastics and thermosets and to address the various application areas of each one of these. So, as we have seen in the previous slide that the plastics or the polymers can broadly be categorized into two categories that is the thermosets and the thermoplastics. So, we can see that definitely there has to be some distinction between these two types of polymers and therefore, they have been classified separately. Another important point I would like to address here is that why we are focusing on the properties of the thermosets and the thermoplastics in a little bit detail is because we have another module coming up in which we would be discussing the processing techniques for polymer matrix composites. So, basically a composite is made up of two broad constituents or two macro constituents which are the polymer and the reinforcement or the matrix and the reinforcement. So, a composite is made up of a matrix and a reinforcement and in case of polymer matrix composite the matrix would be made up of a polymer. So, we need to understand that which type of polymer we should use and which type of fibers can be incorporated into that polymer. So, that we get a very good property of the polymer matrix composite. So, from that point of view also or from the basic understanding for module number 5 in which we would be discussing the processing techniques of polymer matrix composite, this discussion is also equally important. So, we should now try to understand that what are thermoplastics basically. So, a material that cures reversibly and softens when heated above the glass transition temperature or the melting point and becomes hard after cooling is called a thermoplastic. This is a very, very simple definition of a thermoplastic, although a more elaborate and at more technical savvy definitions can be given. But to make the understanding very, very clear, there are only two, three important words in this definition. I have tried to simplify the definition so that everybody can understand that what is a thermoplastic. Basically, it is a plastic material, but it cures reversibly. Now, important point to note here is cure. Now, what do we mean by cure? Cure basically means that it can be achieved by two different methods. It means that if the raw material that is the plastic is available in a raw form that is it is suppose it is available in pellets form. Now, in these pellets we want to convert them into a solid form. So, the curing process has to take place. So, curing basically can be done at a temperature or by combining or by a chemical reaction or combining two or three different constituents together. For example, in thermosets that we are going to cover in the today's lecture. We will see that in thermoset suppose we have a epoxy which is one type of a thermoset. This epoxy is combined with a hardener and because of the reaction between the epoxy and the hardener that we have combined together, the curing process takes place. So, cures irreversibly means that from the raw stage to the final stage in which we want to use this particular plastic, it cures reversibly means once we can cure, we can convert those pellets into the final product and again the final product we can heat it above the melting point of that particular plastic and again we can get the raw material. Maybe again it will soften and come back to its original shape. So, basically a material that cures reversibly means that it can be brought back to its original shape or original type with the help of temperature. So, a material that cures reversibly and softens when heated above the glass transition temperature or melting point and becomes hard after cooling is called thermoplastic. So, once we are suppose we have heated it while we are processing it will become soft and once we will remove the heat or remove the temperature it will become hard. So, basically we need to understand that thermoplastics cures reversibly and if I ask the question that what can be the opposite of cures reversibly the opposite would be cures 
irreversibly. So in case of thermosets, the curing process is irreversible. Once we have converted the raw material into its final shape or final product, it cannot be brought back to its original shape or original type or original form. So that is uh, the basic difference between the thermoplastic and the thermoset. We will see that what are the various types of thermoplastics, what are the various types of thermosets and why the difference between the two when they are subjected to the curing process because one is curing reversibly, another one is curing irreversibly. So there has to be some difference at a particular level which makes this process to happen. So, thermoplastics have a linear or a branched molecular structure. Molecular structure of thermoplastics is given on the screen. We can see that these are the branches. It has a linear, linear means this is linear. Thermoplastics are linear or branched molecular structure. There are different branches that are coming. This is a molecular structure of the thermoplastics. Now, what are the properties of the thermoplastics? The notable properties of the thermoplastic materials are they have high strength and toughness, they have better hardness, chemical resistance, durability, self lubrication, transparency and water proofing. So, these are some of the properties and these properties would be useful when we are going to convert the thermoplastic into the final product. Now, we will see that what are the different types of products that can be made out of thermoplastic materials, but these are the properties which would dictate their application into the market that for making a particular type of a product these properties would be useful. So, once again we can revise that what are the various properties that the thermoplastics possess that they have high strength and toughness, hardness is good, chemical resistance is good, durability thermoplastic components can be durable and they can have self lubrication properties and they can be made transparent also and sometimes if we, if a particular product has to be made for waterproofing thermoplastics can be used for waterproofing applications also so we have seen till now that thermoplastics are the materials which cures reversibly once we have made a product again we can heat and bring back to its original form the plastic once it has been converted to the final product we can heat it and again bring back to its original form we have seen what is the it has a linear and the branch structure and we have seen that what are the important properties of the thermoplastics now we will see types of thermoplastic materials because it is a very big family we, when we will see the various processes or various processing techniques which are used to process these thermoplastics into the final products or different types of product with these uh, would be the raw materials that would we would be using to convert them into the final product. So, what are the various types of thermoplastic materials on your screen you can see the types of thermoplastic materials different types of thermoplastic materials are acronitrile butadiene styrene which is most commonly called as ABS, acrylics, polycarbonates, polypropylenes, polyvinyl chloride, liquid crystal polymers, cellulosics, polyamides, vinyls, fluorocarbons and acetals. So, there are different categories of thermoplastic materials and which can further be blended and there can be a huge family of thermoplastic materials which can be used to convert into various types of tangible products. So, we will see that what are the various types of products that can be made out of thermoplastic materials. So, coming on to the applications that what are the various applications of the thermoplastics, the thermoplastic materials can be used to manufacture now these are the applications and in our module our focus is to understand the processing techniques that can be used to process these thermoplastics into these products. Now, the products are there on your screen already, we can convert these thermoplastic materials into dashboards, we can make car trims, different types of toys can be made out of these thermoplastic materials, phones, handles, electrical products, bearings, gears, ropes, hinges and catches, glass frames, cables, hoses, sheets and windows can be made. So, different types of products can be made. Now, just see the products that are listed on the screen. 
just take a while and have an idea that what are the various types of products which are listed on the screen. We can see that these products vary in the application spectrum. Some particular products have got some specific requirements, some particular products have to be used under some specific requirements or some specific conditions. Each product will have a different shape, it will have a shape complexity. Each product will have a size, there would be some big products, there would be some small products. So, we can see that there are two, three important things that come to our mind when we see the application spectrum of thermoplastics which is there on your screen. That so many different types of products can be made by thermoplastics and we can have an idea now that the processes that would be used to convert these thermoplastics into the final product should also be very versatile. So, that they can process the thermoplastics into various shapes, into various complexities and into various specific designs so that they can, uh, the products which are made out of thermoplastics should be able to meet the design requirements of a particular product or of a particular specification. So, applications are there materials are there we have taken some examples of thermoplastics we will see some examples of thermosets also but how to convert these thermoplastics into the final product and how to convert the thermosets into the final product that would be our main objective of discussion in module number 4 as the title of the course goes processing of non metal so our focus is more on processing and less on the basic physics or chemistry of the materials. But before going to the processing, we should first understand that what are the various materials that we are going to process. So, we have seen till now thermoplastics. In thermoplastics, these are the materials which cures reversibly. Once we have converted them into the final product, they can be brought back into their original form. How? By the process of heating above a particular temperature and when you heat it above a particular temperature, they will again come back to its original form that is they cure reversibly. And we have seen some examples of the types of thermoplastics which are used in industry and now on your screen you can see the various applications of the thermoplastics which are there in our day to day life. Now, coming on to the thermosets that is the second category of materials that is up for discussion in today's lecture, the materials which cures irreversibly. The basic difference cures reversibly, cures irreversibly. So, cures irreversibly means that once we have converted the raw material that is a thermoset material into the final product, how it can be converted either by heating or by a chemical reaction. As in the very beginning of today's lecture, I have given one example that epoxy is one type of a thermoset and it can be converted from its, suppose epoxy is available in a viscous liquid form it is uh, we can say it is a uh, available in a liquid form and now we can mix a hardener which is also a liquid so epoxy is available in a liquid form sticky form and we have the hardener also available which is in the liquid form we combine these two stir them together and the curing process takes place now in this particular curing process from a liquid raw material we get a solid final product. So, from conversion of this liquid into the solid can be very vaguely called as a curing process. Otherwise, there are chemical reactions that take place in this process, but just to understand that we have a raw material. The raw material is in the liquid form or a, uh, we can say sticky liquid form or a gel form. We mix another material that is we call as a hardener. So, we have epoxy, we have a hardener, we mix the epoxy and the hardener in a predetermined proportions. It can be by weight or by volume and then you mix them together and allow them to cure or allow them to solidify. So, from liquid raw material, we are getting a solid final product. So, that is called the process of curing. But what we try to understand here is that this process in case of thermosets is irreversible. As on your screen you can see the materials which cures irreversibly. Once we have converted this gel with the hardener by the heat or the reaction of the heat, heat of the reaction sorry, it converts into a solid form and we get a product. Now, suppose this is the product I get 
from the liquid I have got a solid. Now, suppose if I heat it at a critical temperature or higher temperature, this I will not be able to get my constituents back. What I have added? I have added epoxy and a hardener in predetermined proportions. Now, these two things have been combined together, it, one was available in a gel form, another one was available in liquid form, these two were combined together, they were mixed and then they were put into a mold which was having this particular shape and the mold when the curing process took place, it took a solid form, this is the final product I have got. Now, this if I heat again at a elevated temperature or at a critical temperature for this particular type of a thermoset, I will not be able to get the constituent that is a gel and the liquid again. Why? Because the answer is very clear on your screen, the materials which cures irreversibly. So, the process of curing conversion from that liquid into the solid is a irreversible process. That means that I will not be able to get the raw materials in the same form in which I have used before Produ producing this particular product. So, the materials which cures irreversibly and become permanently hard and rigid after curing are called thermosets. Whereas, in case of thermoplastics, if I combine the two raw materials together and make a final product and if I heat, I may be able to get or if it is one material only one raw material and it is heated because I have told that curing process can be accomplished in two different ways. Either we can heat it and do the curing process, another is by the reaction of two different constituents together we can start the curing process or we can perform the curing process. So, basically if we have only heated the raw material and converted it into a final product, again if we heat we may get back the raw material in its original form in case of thermoplastics, but in case of thermosets this is not possible. So, again I am reading the definition of thermosets on your screen. The materials which cures irreversibly and become permanently hard and rigid after curing are called thermosets. Thermoset plastics cannot be remelted, which I have already highlighted. So, they cannot be remelted. Continued heating for a long time leads to degradation or decomposition. So, the final product which I have made out of the thermosets it will degrade, it can decompose, it can burn, it may not be usable after the heating process again because it will decompose or degrade the properties may not be the same as we have made earlier. So, basically in case of thermosets, we are not able to get back our raw material once it has taken its final form. So, thermosets have this specific property to be converted into hard and rigid solids after the curing process and it is a curing is irreversible in nature, whereas in thermoplastics the curing is reversible. Now, this is the molecular structure of thermosets, we can see on your screen, there is a cross link, this black portion, there is a cross linked structure, three dimensional cross linked network of covalent intermolecular bonds, cross linked structures are there. So, these are the three dimensional network of covalent intermolecular bonds which prevent the reversible curing. In case of thermoplastics, this three dimensional network is not formed and therefore, the curing process is reversible in nature. Whereas, in case of thermosets, this three dimensional network is formed which avoids the process of reversibility or which makes the curing process of the thermosets irreversible. So, in case of thermoplastic, no three dimensional network is formed. Therefore, the thermoplastics, the curing process is reversible. In case of thermosets, as you can see on your screen, thermosets have a three dimensional network of covalent intermolecular bond or cross, cross link structure, which makes the curing process irreversible in case of thermosets. Now, we can see the different types of thermosetting materials. Different types of thermoset materials are alkalides, allylics, 
amines, bakelite, epoxies. I have already given you an example of an epoxy. We can have phenolics, polyester, silicon, we can have polyurethane and vinyl ester. These are some of the thermosetting materials. There can be others also. So, we have seen that there are different types of thermoplastic materials, there are different type of thermoset materials and these materials now given different shapes depending upon the requirement and they have different application spectrum. So, we will try to see that what are the applications of the thermosets. So, on your screen you can now see the applications of some of the typical thermoset products. Oh, by mistake it is thermoplastics, but some of the typical thermosets, these are the examples of thermosets. So, some of the typical thermoset products are electrical equipment, motor brush holders, printed circuit boards, circuit breakers, encapsulation material, kitchen utensils, handles and knobs and spectacle lenses. So, there can be different types of applications for thermosets also. So, we have seen that what are the applications for thermoplastics, what are the applications for thermosets and these are only some of the applications which we have been able to list in this particular presentation, but there are large number of other application areas also where the thermoplastics and thermosets are being used. So, we can see again here that the different types of products are being made out of the these materials. Now, one particular material we can say is curing reversibly, another one is curing irreversibly, but still we have a large variety of the materials available. We have seen a list of thermoplastics which is available with the engineers, we have seen a list of thermosets which are available with the engineers and all these materials can be converted into different shapes and forms and into different products which are being used worldwide. So, basically we need to understand that what are the processes which can be used to convert these basic raw materials. Now, these raw materials may be as I have given you an example of epoxy that epoxy is available in a gel or a liquid form. The other raw materials are also available in pellets form or powder form or sometime in liquid or gel form. So, different types of raw materials, the different types of thermosets and thermoplastics are available in different forms and these particular forms have to be converted into the tangible products and different types of products that can be made out of thermosets and thermoplastics have already been listed in this particular presentation. So, now we will try to understand the structure of the plastic. So, how basically a plastic or a polymer structure look like. So, different types of plastics or polymers can be there. So, we can have linear structure, branched structure, cross linked structure, network structure. So, different types of structures can be there. We will try to see the structures with the help of the diagrams that which particular structure look like because the final properties of the polymer would depend or the final property of the plastic would depend upon the type of structure which is present in the polymer. So, we will try to see that linear which are the uh, polymers or plastics which have linear structure, which have uh, cross linked structure, which have branch structure and further this linear and branched are can further be categorized into isomeric states and these isomeric states can be stereo isomers or geometrical isomers. So, what are isomers that also we will try to understand in the subsequent slides and finally, the geometrical isomers can further be classified into cis and trans type of isomers. So, basically the main objective of today's lecture is to have a brief idea about the basic theory of the thermosets and thermoplastic or in general the plastics as a whole that we should know that how or what are the basic we can say characteristics of the plastic materials that what are the various categories of the plastic material, how what is the basic structure of a plastic material, what are the monomers and how these monomers get converted into the polymers and how these polymers can be further made into desired products. So, our focus primarily is to have a review of the plastics or the basic science of plastics. So, in this particular slide you can see that different type of structures are available. So, we can have linear structure, branch structure, cross linked structure, network structure and then different isomeric states are there for linear and branch structures. So, we further stereo isomers and geometric isomers and within geometric we have cis and trans type of isomers. So, now one by one we will try to see now, linear structure is a very simple type of structure on your screen you can see this is a linear chain. 
So, monomer units are linked together to form linear chain. For example, nylon, high density polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride and polyester. So, all these types of polymers which are mentioned there that is nylon, high density polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride and polyester all these have a linear structure. So, you can see the monomer units are linked together to form a linear chain. So, this is a simple type of linear structure. Now, why we are discussing this particular terminology here that uh, some of the polymers may have a linear structure, some of the other polymers may have a branch structure, some of the other polymers may have a uh, cross linked structure. Why? Because this particular structure would finally dictate the properties of the material and these properties we need to understand when we have to process them into the desired product. So, once we know that this is having a linear structure, we can very easily have an idea what type of behavior this particular polymer will show when we will try to process it into a desired form. So, basic knowledge of the structures is important. So, one of the primary types of molecule, uh, we can say uh, structure of polymers is a linear structure in which the monomer units are linked together to form a linear chain. So, few examples are also given on your screen. Then we have a branch structure in which the linear chains have branches also. You can see the monomers are joined to form long chains with branches of different lengths. So, we can see this is one branch, this is another branch, this is another branch. So, the length of the branches may be different. So, the monomers are joined to form long chains with branches of different lengths. Now, what are the examples of branch structure? Low density polyethylene, glycogen and starch. So, these are three examples where they have a branch structure. So, we have seen that some of the polymers have a linear structure, some of the polymers have a branch structure and also some of the polymers may have a cross linked structure. Now, in cross linked structure, the monomer units are cross linked together to form a cross linked chains. So, on your screen you can see the monomer units are cross linked. So, there are cross links here. This is a cross link, this is a cross link, these are the linear chains, this is a linear chain. So, the monomer units are cross linked together to form cross linked chains. Chains are connected by covalent bonds. For example, rubber and bakelite. So, we can see that few examples of crossed linked structure also. So, we can see that different types of structures are there. We have seen li uh, linear structure, we have seen branch structure in which the branches of monomer chains are there and then we have seen the cross link structure. So, these structures definitely we can see are having special characteristics. Why? Because here you see the example is rubber and bakelite. Now, these two type of examples are different in their properties in relation to the other polymers which are having a linear structure or which are having a branch structure. If you remember, the linear structure have got certain examples, the branch structure has also got certain examples. So, those examples if you just have a overlook that what were the materials which were there having linear structure or branch structure, the properties of those materials would be different or are different from the properties of rubber and bakelite which clearly indicates that the structure is definitely having a effect on the properties of the material. So, that is why we need to understand the different types of structures which are available because when we discuss the processes for processing of polymers or plastics we would be seeing, we would be telling that this particular material suppose epoxy has got this type of a structure therefore, this process is being used for processing of epoxy based products or there can be some other type of a polymer and because of its structure a process would be used for processing or a particular technique would be used for processing that particular polymer. So, therefore, we need to understand that different types of structures are there and each structure has got its own characteristics. Finally, we have a network structure, the monomers are joined together to form a large three dimensional network for example, epoxy or phenol formaldehyde. So, here also we can see epoxy has got a large three dimensional network and therefore, one important point which has been emphasized today in the lecture itself that when we 
combine an epoxy with a hardener and we make it cure it into the final product. The final product cures irreversibly that we cannot get epoxy back. Why? Because of this structure. The monomers are joined together to form a large three dimensional network which is a very rigid network and once this type of a network three dimensional structure is formed we are not able to do the curing irreversibly sorry we are not able to do the curing reversibly. So, epoxy has got a three dimensional network. So, we have seen different types of networks are there. We have seen the linear network, there can be a uh, branch network, cross linked network or this is a network structure. Coming on to the isomeric states. Now, what are isomers? Let us first read what is there on the slide. Isomers are molecules that have same molecular formula. So, the molecular formula is same for the isomer, then why they are different, but have a different arrangement of atoms in space. So, the chemical formula or the molecular formula is same, but they have different arrangement of atoms in space. Isomers may be in two form that is stereoisomers and geometrical isomers. Further, geometrical isomers can be divided into trans and cis isomers depending upon the items in space. So, further the geometrical isomers can be divided into cis and trans types of isomers. So, in many cases we will see that the polymers may exist in isomeric states also. So, <coughs> isomers because this terminology we may be using in some of our subsequent lectures. Therefore, this particular point has been clarified here that what is basically a isomers. So, isomers are molecules that have same molecular structure or same molecular formula sorry, but have a different arrangement of the atoms in space. So, isomers may be in two form that is stereoisomers and geometrical isomers. Further geometrical isomers can be divided into two categories that is cis and trans types of isomers. So, this is just to have a brief overview of the isomeric states which may exist in some polymers. Now, these are the plastic monomers which are further made into polymers. So, this is just an idea of how a monomer may exist. So, on your screen you can see this is a polyethylene monomer, the formula is given, polypropylene, this is PTFE, it is given here, polyvinyl chloride we can see, polystyrene. PMMA polymethyl methacrylate. So, this is just to give an idea that plastics are made up of different monomers and these monomers combine together to form a polymeric structure or a polymer. As we have seen the different types of structures. Now, what are the different types of structures if we revise that we have seen today? We have seen a linear structure, we have seen a branch structure, we have seen a cross linked structure and we have seen a network structure. So, different types of structures we have seen. Now, these structures would be made up of these monomers only. So, each monomer then will combine with another monomer and another monomer and then the polymerization would take place and we will get a polymer. And once we get a polymer, the polymer will have its own distinct characteristics, it will have a different mechanical property, it will have a different physical property, different the properties of the polymer that would be made out of these monomers would be different. So, here you can see that the basic constituents are different, when different monomers will combine together to form a polymer. Maybe in this particular case, if we say polyethylene, the monomer is given. So, the properties of polyethylene would be different from the properties of PMMA. Similarly, the properties of polypropylene would be different from the polystyrene. So, when these will have different properties, their processing techniques would also be different. So, our discussion would also focus on some of the properties of these types of plastics which we are covering today. So, our today's lecture is focusing on 
primarily on the revision of what are thermosets and thermoplastics, what are monomers, what are the various types of structures which are present in the polymers. But subsequent lecture would focus on the properties because now we have seen that there are monomers which combine together to make a polymer. Now how the polymer melt would behave, at what temperature what is going to happen, if we load a polymer in a particular loading environment, how it is going to behave, how the stress strain would be their stress strain behavior would be there for a particular polymer or how the stress strain behavior of polymers would be different from metals or from brittle materials. So, all these things we would be discussing in our subsequent lecture that is lecture number 2. So, with this we come to the end of lecture number 1 in module number 4. So, I will just revise what we have covered today in lecture number 1 of module 4. We started our discussion with a brief introduction of module 4 that what we are going to cover in module number 4. In module 4, our focus would be on processing of plastics. So, major emphasis is on processing of plastics, but before we go and start converting the raw material that is a plastic into the final product, we need to understand that what a plastic basically is. And for that we have seen that plastic has derived its name from a Greek word, which means that it can be easily molded and shaped. That is the shape can be given to the plastic easily. We have seen that plastics can broadly be categorized into two categories that is thermosets and thermoplastics. And in thermoplastics, the curing process is reversible and in thermosets the curing process is irreversible. We have tried to understand that what is a curing process in which we have seen that curing can be done either at an elevated temperature or by the reaction of the constituents. So, we have seen that what are thermoplastics, what are thermosets, what is the structure of thermoplastic, what is the structure of thermoset, what are the applications of thermoplastics, what are the applications of thermosets. Moreover, we have seen that what are the various types of structures that are there in which we have seen the linear structure, the branch structure, the cross link structure and finally, the network structure. And further we have tried to understand that what do we mean by isomeric states that may exist in certain polymers. And finally, on this particular slide we have seen that there are what are the various monomer units which are there present there in different types of polymers. And these are the polymers that we are going to discuss in our subsequent lecture or in our subsequent series of lectures when we would be making products out of these polymers or these plastics. With this, we come to the end of lecture number 1 in module number 4. Thank you.